Hey guys, it's Lee here for iMindBlocks. So this one is going to be a burst coin update for March, April and May. Uh, but just before I get onto those uh, figures, uh, I just want to quickly show you the current um, setup as it stands. So we've recently changed over to POC2, so I just want to show you my current setup um, as it is and then we'll go on to the uh, figures. So uh, I'll flip the camera around because uh, I've got this weird flicker effect and um, let's just talk you through the current setup. Okay, so this is the current burst coin mining setup. A bit of a messy bundle, but it's working, which is the main thing. Um, I do, or I should I say, I will uh, rearrange it all soon. It's just kind of one of those things once you've got it up and running, it's almost like you don't want to touch it again afterwards. Um, so, a couple of things. So, I've recently had to replot all of the uh, drives, uh, like you would have seen um, in some of my recent videos. I talked about uh, changing over to POC2 and the burst coin uh, plotting. So one of the things, a uh, bit of a tip for you, is number your drives. So I've just got these uh, sticky labels on and I've just numbered each one of the drives. And what that means is it's so much more easier to find any problematic drives. Um, so you guys could even maybe take it a step further. You can add like the drive letters or even the nonce uh, sequence. Um, but I've just left it as drive uh, numbers. Um, so on the left hand side we've got uh, nine Toshiba drives. And then we've got a cluster of four different um, Seagate drives, and then we've got our eight terabyte Lacey drives uh, on the end there. But adding the numbers in, um, it just helps you fault finding with your hubs and stuff. If you have any connection issues or power problems, anything like that, number drives really helps. You also see these great big uh, orange balls, if you've not seen them before. These are AFO fireballs, so they're like an automatic uh, fire extinguisher. Um, I've talked about those in a, another video. Um, Taking a look at the mining um, interface. So you can see we've got the JMiner running, so that's actually using the uh, built-in GPU into the CPU. So the CPU is uh, an A10-7700K, but I'm using the GPU aspect um, of that processor for the JMiner. Um, if I scroll up, you'll see that we have just uh, over a 100 terabytes in uh, capacity. And we are, most of the time, we are mining through that um, roughly about 30, yeah, 34, 35 seconds. So that's really useful. Uh, and just to show you the kind of the, uh, the drive uh, configuration. So we've got these drives and what I have personally done is um, label them by the drive type and also a number. So obviously we've got Lacey 2 here. We can look down, we know that's our Lacey 2. Um, and all the others are kind of like numbered um, in sequence. But that process really just helps with um, any uh, troubleshooting. Um, in addition, uh, this particular mining machine, which is, by the way, it's this kind of one at the bottom here. This is our work free machine. Um, and I've got two NVIDIA cards in there, a GTX 970 from an old gaming uh, rig and a GTX 1050 Ti. And that's currently mining a Chroma using uh, the Claymore's uh, dual miner. So that is the current setup uh, there. So I just want to share with you that with you guys um, before talking about the fi figures for the, for the last few months. Okay guys, so I've just been through the Burst Coin Explorer. I've extracted all of that data for the past few months uh, into Excel, but from there then I've, what I've done is just put it into a few different slides and, and I'm gonna break down that data for you. First of all, let's take a look at the uh, Burst Coin price and the difficulty over these past uh, few months. So on screen, you can see the Burst Coin price as of, uh, as of sorry, 1st of March, and we've got the price of $0.35 dollars and 347 uh, Satoshis. Um, and for the past three months from March uh, through to May, um, that's pretty much the, the main higher peak of it. From there, it certainly went uh, down quite a lot, um, down to less than $0.02 cents for each individual uh, Burst Coin and 200 Satoshis at the lower points. Uh, towards the end of May, it did recover quite quite a bit, um, two and a half cents, and um, around about sort of um, two fifty to three hundred um, satoshis. So the price has been kind of um, fairly steady for the most part of that. Um, and going through into June, where we are now, uh, it picked up towards the end of May, and then but now it's sort of dropped down where we are middle of June, currently eighteenth of June. So back again um, to kind of the lows, um, but the whole market is pretty much like that. So that's the price. Uh, let's take a look at the network difficulty. So the Burst Coin network difficulty has been uh, very interesting recently. So here I've got a one year chart. So you can see it goes all the way back to um, June of uh, 2017. Um, so 
for pretty much most of last year, all the way up until January, it was fairly stable, around um, 125,000 terabytes. And then from January, it really sort of started picking up. Um, by the time we got to March, we was at 300,000 um, terabytes. And then from there, it kind of stabilized roughly about 350,000 terabytes, all the way and through until June, where we are now. So like I say, June 18th. So it's quite interesting. So for all the period of uh, the first coin and into the last uh, period of time, which like I say is March, April and May, it's roughly been about 350,000 terabytes. So that network has been fairly stable in that mid-range. You'll, you'll always get these um, kind of peaks and troughs, but just as an average about 350. Um, interestingly, what you guys uh, can also see is the very end of the chart on the right hand side, uh, we've got a massive drop. And this is where the first coin uh, fork took place. So I'm not too sure if the network cap, uh, capacity has actually dropped by quite this much. Basically, it's gone down by two thirds. So from over 300,000 terabytes um, to like 110, and now probably close to about 150. So I don't know whether that's a reporting error or whether it is actually uh, a fact. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more. And um, what I can say is that uh, recently, for the last sort of couple of days since the changeover, um, I have personally found two blocks in quite a short period of time. So I don't know whether that is just luck or whether uh, the network difficulty is uh, much lower now and therefore it should be easier to find blocks. So that's uh, quite interesting. Um, now let's take a look at the earnings, uh, my personal earnings for uh, March. Okay, so here are my burst coin earnings for March 2018. Uh, currently have 103 terabytes uh, plotted. Um, so I had to go back and kind of do this uh, retrospectively because we're currently in June, so I had to go back and kind of work out the price and stuff. So it might not strictly be super accurate, so give it a little bit of a give and take on some of the numbers, uh, particularly regarding the burst coin price for that time uh, in, in Bitcoin, Satoshi's, or also the dollar price. So, you know, it might be a few cents out just to make you aware. So burst coin price was 275 Satoshi's and that's 0.025 dollars. The revenue earned was 63.7 cents and the total amount of burst coin that I earned during that period of time from March was 2,523. I managed to find two blocks in that month. If we consider our power costs, I've worked out roughly as $25. That leaves a profit for the month of March of $38.07. Moving into April 2018, same amount plotted, 103 terabytes. The burst coin price in Bitcoin was 230 satoshis with an average price of 0.18 cents. Revenue for the month of April was $44.42. In burst coin, I managed to mine 2,468. Um, interestingly, in that month, uh, April, I managed to find three blocks. So really, I kind of got shorted by the pool by about four or five hundred burst coin. So that's that's how it works out sometimes, unfortunately. So in this particular month, that kind of almost would have been a better month for me to mine solo. I would have ended up with an extra four or five hundred burst coin. So got got shafted by the pool a little bit in that month, but sometimes that's how it happens. Um, considering our power cost of $25, that leaves us with a profit of uh, $19.42. Moving on to May. Um, so May was a little bit better in terms of the burst coin price. Uh, it was 318 Satoshis on average and 0.026 um, cents. They give us a revenue of $46.93. Considering that I actually mined less burst coin in that month, it was still um, kind of better than the previous month, just by a little bit. So the total burst coin mined was 1,805. So you can see the difficulty was really much higher through the month of May. Um, only found two blocks in May, so that kind of correlates to the burst coin price. Uh, sorry, the total burst coin mined quite a likeness. Uh, power cost was $25, and that leaves us with a profit of $21.93. Okay guys, so that has been my burst coin earnings for the past three months. So that is for March, April and May 2018, uh, sharing those uh, results with you. Uh, like I say, I'm just over 103 terabytes. Uh, one other sort of thing to consider is I have had quite a bit of downtime during these past couple of months, 
mostly because um, I've been kind of concerned about fire risk and things like that. So quite often I have been kind of shutting down my miner, which is not something I normally recommend or do. Um, but me just being kind of overly um, protective and conservative. So from time to time I have been shutting down the miners um, during you know the, those periods of time that I've been out of the house and things quite a lot. Um, I'm going to be moving the miner outside to an external location, a garden shed or somewhere where I can just leave it running. You know, in, in worst case scenario, if it catches fire or something crazy, yeah, it won't cause any bother. It won't burn my house down effectively. So I just want to make you aware of that. So it's not been 100% uptime, probably about 95%. Um, but I just want to share with that uh, with you as well. So hopefully you found it interesting. I think going forward with Burstcoin, the earnings obviously are very small considering the investment, but it's quite stable. Um, you know, each month is um, qu quite comparable to the previous month, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think the good times are probably quite well behind us. You know, uh, I think when I first started doing these burst coin earnings, uh, I think one of the months was you know over five hundred dollars. Um, I don't think we're going to be going back to those kind of days anytime soon. Um, but with the changes over to uh, the POC2 and the pre direction fork, um, I think there's a lot of good things on the horizon for Burst Coin. So I'm just going to let this play out and we'll see um, how we get on from here. Um, of course, I'll keep you guys um, updated as we go on. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, any questions or comments, uh, put those in the commentary below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, subscribe if you haven't done so already and give it a like if you like the video. Um, if you dislike it, then let me know in the comments why and I'll try and improve for the next one. Thanks a lot guys, I'll see you on the next video.